Moving to the next uh, panel, building uh, global champions out of Greece. I turn the floor over to Mrs. Uh, Julie Mayer. Julie is, is a very notable and significant figure in the domain of entrepreneurship and, and venture capital uh, worldwide. She's the chief executive of Ariadne Capital. Julie, it is a pleasure to have you here with us today. The floor is now yours. Excellent. Good morning. It is a real pleasure to be here. Um, I run Ariadne Capital, and with a name like Ariadne Capital, I think it's appropriate to come to, to Athens and be part of this. Um, it, this panel is really about hearing from more of the tremendous fund managers and entrepreneurs that are redefining the ecosystem, as we heard in the last, in the last panel. And it is fantastic to see that Greece is being redefined by its entrepreneurs and that, I think as Lucas very well summed up, everybody needs to play a role in the ecosystem, but the successful outcome belongs to everyone. I thought that was a fantastic last line. Just one minute on myself. Um, I built a network of entrepreneurs called First Tuesday about 15 years ago, which went across Europe. Um, we are doing that again with Ariadne Capital, which is an investment fund, so we have our own fund. We're investing in technology across Europe, but we're also building Entrepreneur Country, uh, which is a corporate startup platform. And uh, there is, of course, a presence in Greece. Um, we have a, a model of entrepreneurs backing entrepreneurs, where leading entrepreneurs, as the um, gentleman from Bulgaria was speaking in the previous panel, about how um, you know, Bulgaria will d develop and contribute a billion uh, Euro startup and then reinvest that capital. We also see that trend, and my whole company is based really on entrepreneurs who've cashed out, recontributing their, their capital back into the ecosystem and, and investing in the, in the next generation of entrepreneurs. So that model of entrepreneurs backing entrepreneurs is, is very significant. And I was very pleased to again hear Lucas talking about the emergence of more angel investors who are co-investing alongside of the venture capital funds. One final point is uh, we also have backed a Greek entrepreneur by the name of Andreas Raptopoulos, who is running a company called Maternet, which many of you will know the drones or the UAV market is, is taking off. This is not science fiction. This is a reality. It's a massive new industry. So we're very pleased to have backed our first Greek entrepreneur. And as a final point before I ask the panelists to introduce themselves, I think it's just really important because the size of the opportunity and frankly the size of the problem sometimes can see, seem so massive that I think we have to be united in a belief that, which every entrepreneur is by the way, that small becomes big and startups change the world. So some of these um, are merely ideas, some of them have taken on traction, many of these fund managers have made investments, but the point is they have the capability and the momentum and velocity to change the ecosystem and the economy. So if I can ask, um, uh, if I can ask you um, first, Maria, to, to tell us a little bit, introduce yourself to the, to the audience, uh, who you are and the business that you run. Hello, everybody. I've been an editor and uh, an executive uh, for 20 consecutive years in traditional publishing houses. So I know this industry through thick and thin. Uh, so two years ago, I decided to bring together a group of seasoned professionals and creative minds that were fed up with old school traditional publishing houses and create uh, what we now call Olive Media. Uh, our idea behind this whole thing was that media is changing, technology is actually changing all industries. Media could never be an exception. And uh, the way that we consume content, all of us readers, is changing. And we have to be able to invest in new technologies and digital solutions in order to find our audience wherever they are. And the audience right now is migrating from platforms to platforms and we have to be able to find them wherever they go. So we presented our idea to Eleconos Fund, to Eleconos Fund um, through a solid business plan, I believe. As solid a business plan can be in such a volatile economic situation, of course. And uh, backed um, from Timing, which is the biggest publishing house in the world, through our previous relationship with them um, and proven track record, uh, we convinced the fan that uh, we, we, a new publishing, uh, digital-oriented publishing house, with, um, which is powered by a management team and not a publisher, uh, is worth the try. 
So we are operating in the Greek territory since April 2013. Uh, we have overly, we have created, uh, we have over 70 uh, people in our workforce right now. And after six months of operation, we have uh, successfully launched uh, all our products, all three um, mega brands, the, flash, the flagship mega brands that I am trusted us with, uh, which is in style, people, and fortune across all platforms, uh, tablet, web, uh, mobile, and newsstands. And after those uh, six months, I have to say that we are proud to be one of the, in, in over 20 countries, the Time Inc. has licensed its products. Uh, we are the only company that is a startup. And um, the fund trusted us, and we were funded, uh, tr trusted us with this um, dream, let's say, and our goal. And um, our innovation is, um, we succeeded before, we succeeded because our innovation lay, lies in, in the use of technology in order to optimize our workflow and optimize the functions related to our industry in order to create content that can be used and distributed through several channels, creating a multi-platform experience. Congratulations, that's quite a, uh, quite a coup for your first big contract to, to win Time Inc. That's absolutely fantastic. And it shows again and again, this is something that they should have been able to do, but it takes an entrepreneurial management team to actually get it done. Congratulations. Takis, would you like to? Yes, please. Thank you. Hello from uh, myself also. Thank you for coming here today. Um, uh, we run uh, Elikonos uh, Jeremy Fund. This is a fund of uh, 17 euros along with my partner, Mr. Pandelis Papagiorgiou. Uh, we started uh, the fund uh, with a deep belief uh, that there is a significant investment opportunity to create value and return in the ICT sector in Greece. We believe that this is uh, fueled uh, because of we are actually living one of the, let's say, uh, global technology revolutions that we experience every 20, 25 years driven by the mobile devices, the cloud, uh, the social media. So we are fortunate enough to have this global uh, uh, revolution, revolution that goes uh, around us. However, we also believe that uh, the Greek economic crisis is creating significant opportunity in order to change the, lines, the landscape. And Maria's project is uh, something uh, as an example. I mean, we don't believe that, uh, let's say, six or seven years ago, there was a space or a young uh, team could, let's say, win the timing products and uh, bring them in Greece in a, such a, a difficult, uh, let's say, and very concentrated uh, media industry that used to be until the 2010. Uh, so, we ran a fund of uh, 17 million euros. Uh, we have been very fortunate enough to team up with uh, the Jeremy Initiative and the EIF, which uh, without their presence, uh, this uh, effort here wouldn't be here, anybody of us. I mean, we couldn't raise the funds without the Jeremy, the ESPA and the EIF uh, involvement. However, we have been fortunate enough to have raised capital from people that are very helpful to us they provide significant value added to our management team, but also to our investors companies. And this is uh, something that we really cherish and try to keep it uh, going. And uh, we invest, uh, so far we have invested in Maria, but also we have uh, two other investments that we are going to announce uh, the following days. And we believe that we are going to have a total investment of 3.5 million uh, invested by the end of the year. And um, we invest, uh, we don't have a minimum, uh, however, we try to invest to our overall portfolio. We believe it's going to be around uh, 8 to 11 investee companies. I mean, we're not going to overexpand because we believe that every single company needs a lot of personal attention, attention coaching and guidance. And so we allocate a significant amount of our, of our time spending along with uh, the investee companies. And our maximum investment size is uh, 2 million euros. Excellent. Very good. So again, 17 million uh, euros, 8 to 11 portfolio companies, maximum 2 million in each, in right. each company. Right. Fantastic. Great. If I could um, pass the microphone to Thanasis uh, Kalikos of Odyssey to introduce himself with significant operational and investment experience in Silicon Valley as well as Greece. Thanasis. Uh, I am one of the two managing partners at Odyssey Venture Partners. Uh, we have a 27 million uh, euro fund. Uh, 
I joke many times that uh, it is the largest of general funds, but that's like bragging for being the tallest of the seven dwarfs you know, uh, at, at the 30 million. Um, our investment range is uh, 500, uh, from zero basically, any number, to 2 million uh, euros per funding round. Uh, in addition to ICT and, uh, and, and Greece, our investment focus uh, is uh, to find companies that are addressing international markets. Uh, we're not interested in companies that are addressing the Greek market because we believe it to be relatively small. Uh, it does not present an opportunity to build really large companies if they are only focused on the Greek market. And uh, we have invested in uh, three companies so far that uh, are known, Pignata, next to us is the CEO and founder of Pignata, uh, George, uh, is one of the three companies we've invested in. And in the next, uh, before the end of the year, we should be announcing two more companies for a total of about five million euros uh, in, in, uh, that we have invested in, this, uh, in these companies. Our value added is that we understand Silicon Valley quite well. I have spent my 30-year career uh, in Silicon Valley, either as an operating executive in uh, high-tech startups, to be large companies, uh, as well as uh, a managing partner in a Silicon Valley venture capital fund. Uh, we intend to implement uh, strictly the Silicon Valley. We have no ambition and the unique Greek model as such. Um, we believe that most of the companies we invest in will receive subsequent funding rounds from foreign investors, and therefore they need to look just like a standard Silicon Valley company in terms of their capital structure, their business plans, their expanding. Excellent, so that was 27 million euros and expecting to invest five million before the end of the year. Uh, so if we could have George uh, Pinata introduce himself in Pinata. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is George Panudagis. I am one of the founders and CEO of Pinata. Uh, Pinata is a mobile service that allows you to connect with friends and family through interactive messages and greeting cards. Uh, we started back in 2010 when there were no uh, funds like those uh, here. Uh, we have received 2.2 million funding so far from Greek recently. U.S., Russian, and Chinese investors. Uh, despite our 2.5 years of existence, we are still in early stage because uh, of our project itself. We've just surpassed a quarter of a million users. Uh, here we are. Very good. And if we can have uh, Marco of Upstream introduce himself for anyone who doesn't know Marco. Hi, um, I'm Marco, uh, co-founder and CEO of Upstream. Uh, Upstream is a, a mobile marketing company that now operates uh, in about 40 countries. Uh, we've been around for a while, we're not a startup. We, we were founded in early 2002 and um, basically uh, our experience has been really of a company that is still based in Greece uh, and essentially 99% of our sales are abroad. So. Uh, sort of, a, I guess, an export uh, enterprise software technology company. Excellent. Okay. So you see we have a fantastic panel, and really what we're going to talk about is exactly what it says we're going to talk about, creating global leaders out of Greece. And I'd really like for, for the panelists to just opine a bit on what's the profile of the entrepreneur that you're looking for? Um, how do you know when he or she walks into your office? Is it really clear within the first 15 minutes that you've got a potential star here? Are, do you feel that you're working to build these guys or do they have it innately in them? And, and what can we expect from the investment that you're making? Views on that? Why me? <laughs> uh, I've said in the past that uh, it's, it's like a Supreme Court justice had said once, uh, he said, I cannot define pornography, but I know it when I see it. Uh, it's rather difficult to give you the specific profile of what a good entrepreneur, a successful, potentially successful entrepreneur should look like. Uh, but when we see them, we recognize them pretty fast. Uh, George, it, it was within the first 20 minutes, and this is the guy that uh, I would invest in 
even though he looks very young to me. Uh, you look a lot older now. <laughs> so, so from that perspective, some elements that we look at is people who are focused on what they need to do to succeed and who do not waste any of their time talking about the things that are getting in their way. If you spend time talking about the things that are getting in, the, in your way and how much money you spend in taxes or any nonsense like that, uh, it, you're not an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is a guy who's focused on what they need to do to succeed. Uh, in building global businesses, a dead giveaway is if the person has gotten off his butt and has gotten on a plane and has visited the places that he wants to make his company successful. In that sense, Yorgos had been to the United States multiple times. He had received investment from foreign investors before we invested in, in, in him. And it was clear that this was a guy who understood how he needs to move and operate internationally in order to build an international company. Uh, another element of it is that uh, a successful entrepreneur lives in the vision of the new environment, the new reality he wants to create. And you can see that very clearly because that vision is complete and it's functional to them. It's just a question of time before the rest of the world figures out that this vision makes sense. And that's a really important part of it. As a matter of fact, a, a negative side effect of the quote-unquote crisis in Greece is that many people figured, hey, we have no hope of getting a job. Let's try to figure out how we can do a startup. And oh boy, there's all this money now, these no, venture funds, maybe we can get some money. If we don't get it from grants, maybe we can get it from venture capital. That's a, to us, it's so obvious when people are doing a startup just because they don't have anything better to do, it's clearly not the people that we intend to invest in. That's uh, about as much as I can tell you about how we pick people. If I, if I may add to the very important uh, Thanasis note, is that, I mean, obviously we're, looking, we're seeing everyday people, but very few of them uh, uh, we want to do business with and uh, team up for a long period. I mean, uh, an investment from a venture capital fund is a long-term relationship, and uh, you need to identify to the people that we're going to invest and uh, base our, let's say, relationship that we can work together for many, many years. We can have a mutual understanding about what is important and what is not important. Uh, these people obviously need to have the ethos and uh, uh, the background to respect that at the end of the day we are investing money that are not ours and we need to, to provide a, a very clear uh, view of what we do with this money and what is the end game. And as uh, very importantly, Thanas is uh, noted, I mean, uh, becoming an entrepreneur is not an alternative to find a job. I mean, you need to be very focused. You need to have made a major decision in your life that you're going to change your lifestyle and the things you used to do. I mean, uh, and you have, must have a total commitment in order to succeed. So these are traits uh, and characteristics that are very rarely are to be found in individuals. So we are after these, let's say, strange uh, individuals and, uh, you know. <laughs> Now, Marco, by almost any means, Upstream is a very successful company. Do you ever feel you can kind of let up? Do you ever feel like, okay, it's under control, I, I don't need to work 100 hours a week, you know, go 100 miles an hour? Um, how do you feel about really, you know, a lot of what you've done has really, really worked out well. What's it like to, to feel, okay, you're a rocket going 200 miles an hour? Well, I think what's different about the ICT sector in particular, which is the sector I know, is that unfortunately the life cycle of companies is, is, can be much shorter than what it has been in traditional industries. You know, I'll point out uh, that when I was starting, obviously the big story was Yahoo, and you know, look at where Yahoo is today, um, and countless other examples like that. So you're not easily going to meet companies in the ICT sector similar to Coca-Cola um, or Nestle or Procter. Uh, that means that you're always under threat, okay? But at the same time, that there are countless opportunities. 
essentially what that means is that if you are in the ICT sector um, and you happen to be a one-trick pony in terms of product and you're not investing sufficiently on R&D, uh, you will perish. So you will always have to be fully alert and you, know, you will always have to, to be on your toes. Having said that, uh, as a CEO, if, if after 10 years of having built a company, uh, you resemble the traditional Greek patriarch type entrepreneur who, you know, if for whatever reason um, falls sick or, 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 you know, stops being as effective, the company crumbles, then you, you will have failed. Uh, I think the priority should be to build a very capable management team over the years uh, where the founder um, may or may not be fully active, um, he may or may not contribute, but at the end of the day, the company has the structure, team, depth um, of being able to continue um, into many years to come. And I think a large part of that um, uh, has to do with, with, with a very well thought out options and, and, uh, uh, and, and rewards uh, scheme where each of the senior people or the people that are performing and adding value end up essentially being part owners of the business and over time, even if they were not built, you know, even if they were not initially entrepreneurs, uh, they over time acquire entrepreneurial qualities, um, and the company can really benefit from those. One of the things I'd really like the panel to to give their opinion on is this idea of um, building applications and building platforms. And Mark, maybe you could kick it off because I've heard you mention before, I hope you don't mind, that um, Upstream is becoming a bit of an enabler. Because you are in so many countries, you're actually enabling other applications and other companies to go in. Could, could you maybe kick off this discussion about platforms and applications? with maybe some views from the entrepreneurs as well as the fund managers on, on how you view that opportunity. Yeah, I mean, the, the app space, and I'm talking primarily about mobile, that, that, because that's where it lives in, in our world, is, is a massively exciting space. I mean, it's worth about 30 billion without music and video right now. If you add video and music, it might be closer to 50 billion. Um, However, what I would point out is that despite the initial appearances, although it, is, it seems like the perfect opportunity, like the perfectly competitive market, the perfectly open market, um, and full of opportunity, no doubt that is true up to, an, uh, up to a point. However, let's not forget that it is, uh, it is, a, it is a market where 50% of the sales of, of Google Play and Apple store uh, 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 essentially come from 35 companies. Uh, when you have 800,000 applications in there. Uh, who are these companies? Uh, it is companies like Disney, companies like EA, companies like Zynga, uh, Warner. What do these companies have in common? Um, huge marketing muscle. So, uh, it's not a perfectly competitive market. You do have big success cases like Angry Birds and Rovio, uh, but don't forget that actually Rovio was marketed through Chillingo, a company belonging to EA. Uh, so, what we have seen as an opportunity uh, from the upstream perspective, upstream is more of a player in emerging markets these days. Uh, countries like Brazil and Latin America, large parts of Africa, especially Sub-Saharan Africa, and parts of the Middle East and Southeast Asia. What we have seen there is that actually the ecosystem of apps is developing in a different way. Uh, people don't have credit cards, so the coup that Apple and Google played on Mobile operators in the West cannot work because people simply don't have a way of paying other than through their mobile phones. Uh, there are no mass marketing channels available in a lot of those countries. TV penetration in Nigeria is 15%. Uh, so if, for example, EA wants to launch FIFA 2014, as it does in the West, and use mass media PCs, laptops, they are simply not available. Um, and the third thing is there's hardly any consumer data. So we felt that Upstream has a role to play because we have a huge amount of data, we have connections to uh, actually about a billion people in those markets, uh, we have the ability to allow people to pay uh, for what they purchase. So yes, our, our, our most recent venture, our most recent product line is a, is, is, a, is a platform, a marketplace, where I would say the disenfranchised app developers uh, can put their applications and sell them into emerging markets. We think that is a huge opportunity. 
Fantastic. Um, now, Maria, I'd like you to, if you wouldn't mind, look into your crystal ball with all of media. Fast forward five years, do you keep on developing apps to become a platform business? Walk us through a little bit about the future. Well, this is exactly the reason why we partnered with a big company like Timing, because I'm not Nostradamus and I don't want to be, and media is ever-changing. And um, we don't know even big companies in the world. Um, outlets like New York Times or The Guardian do not know yet what they're doing, what the new business model will be. This is the problem of the old school traditional publishing houses that they were not able or willing to change and reshape their models and reshape the company structure and culture in order to make their products and their look and feel more forward looking. Um, I would never venture such a thing in a local market uh, with my own, let's say, local products because I would not be able to have all these answers. So th that's the reason why I, I believe in big international companies with uh, international presence because globalization is touching upon everything. Um, the boundaries do not exist anymore. And you have to be able to trust the R&D of a big company like Time, for example, where they have big departments working in things like this. And you have to be able to compare notes with other countries because it's, um, it's okay what's happening in the States or in uh, big countries like this. But it's uh, extremely interesting to have information from what's happening in other countries that are crisis-ridden like we are. Uh, so now uh, we are in the process of uh, implementing and uh, building new applications that Time is building as well uh, for mobile mostly because it's uh, the new business that they're looking in. They're trying to figure out the revenue streams right now. Uh, and uh, this, uh, the penetration of mobile is so, it's so vast and huge that you have to be able to bring content and service together with maybe e-commerce and integrate with social media. And this is what they're looking at right now. And um, we have ventured in those six months uh, in the obvious, let's say, existing platforms like tablet, for example, or web. But our uh, goal and dream is in five years to be where time will be. And I'm fairly sure that we will make it. George, yourself, walk us through how your business is going to grow. Five years out from now, what are the key things that you've got to get right? What are you looking for in terms of um, help from your, your partners, your investors, and so forth? But how do you become a global leader in five years' time? I can't say. That's the, the, the most honest answer I can give you. Uh, what I can say is that we do have a plan based on the current facts, and we're trying to do the most accurate predictions on how the industry will ev evolve, we will, uh, will grow, and we will always have the option, we will also have the strategy to adapt on the given standards and be up front of the, of the competition. I think that's key, to be able to, to adapt fast and uh, take uh, the best decisions in, in the shortest time window. Uh, I think that for me it's clear that the values is the platform. Okay, uh, the apps is now the medium. A few years ago it was the TV or the radio, then the uh, the websites. Now it's the mobile apps. Maybe the future is uh, smart TV apps or the Internet of Things apps or whatever it is. Uh, so it doesn't matter how you will deliver what you want to deliver to your customers, but when you deliver it, it should be flawless, it should be perfect, it should be uh, exactly what they were needing. Uh, content is the king and it will always be the king and it's really important to be able to understand and analyze content and also understand and analyze people's needs and do this magic perfect match so you will deliver to the right people the right content, uh, no matter what the context is. Nathanasis, if I could ask you to just, uh, you shared some thoughts earlier about how uh, the startups that you're investing in really need to look just very standard, very structured in the way that they would if they were coming out of Palo Alto, um, and that you expect maybe foreign investors will pick up the later stage rounds and so forth. Perhaps you could share a little bit more about, um, do you think the, the Greek startups that you're investing in, 
are they going to be moving out to Palo Alto? Are these going to stay headquartered back companies like Upstream? Are we going to sell them to technology firms? How does this all shape out in terms of the contribution that these startups make to the Greek economy and you know, the interaction with international buyers and investors and so forth? A little bit more on that, please. We can see these companies, uh, the, the companies we invest in, uh, growing uh, here in Greece, as well as developing international operations. We can easily see that uh, these companies will have uh, their product development, uh, R&D type functions in Greece. Uh, many of their customer support functions can come right out of Greece. Uh, but when it comes to, to sales uh, and, uh, and marketing and business development, that's an international activity. Uh, you have to be where your customers are uh, as such. Uh, we need to appreciate that uh, venture capital is an instrument for funding companies that have the potential to become very large. So the opportunity for, for wealth creation is, is, is significant and the employees in a startup should be able to benefit from that wealth that's being created. Uh, and that will have tremendous impact on Greece as well. It's not just the number of jobs that we are going to create through our investments and the growth of these companies, although that can become rather significant uh, as such. Um, if I were to, to, to ask for a change in the, the legal framework, I would say make it so that it's much easier for Greek companies to give stock options to employees. That's a little bit difficult to do today. We circumvent that by investing in companies that we force them to become Delaware companies, and then we know exactly the structure that uh, we can manage very successfully. And that's what I mean to some extent about Silicon Valley investors looking at a Greek startup and seeing a structure that they totally recognize, a capital structure they recognize, a stock option plan that they immediately recognize, a business plan that is written in their terms, uh, financials that are shown in the standard cap methods so that uh, they can read them and make sense of them right away. And it all uh, seems very familiar to them. That's what we're talking about. As far as, uh, you know, uh, the people in Greece that, that, that engage in these startups, uh, I feel that we have a, a better opportunity than just about most places in the world, including Silicon Valley, to create extremely successful companies in the future. Uh, if people think that Greeks are not enterprising people, think again. The problem we have is we are too enterprising. The biggest problem we have in our productivity is that we have too many darn tiny little companies. And if you're a tiny little company, you cannot be very competitive. So we need to understand some of these things. So the opportunity through venture capital to create successful large companies also enhances our competitiveness. But fundamentally, I think uh, in Greece today, we have the raw materials to create fantastic companies. Also in terms of the ecosystem, I think if the word was slightly misused before, and I want to revisit this, uh, Having 50 startups that live in misery and they get together once a month to talk about their misery is not an ecosystem. I got news for you guys. That's not called an ecosystem. An ecosystem is a structure that provides all the appropriate and necessary services for a company to be successful. So you're talking about law firms, accounting firms, you're talking about the venture capital community, you're talking about the banks who all know how to deal with, the sta with startups. That's an ecosystem. When you have all these resources come together and be very competent in what they do. Uh, we have recognized that the Jeremy program uh, was essential and the management that EIF pro has uh, provided for, uh, for Jeremy was spectacular at a time when there was a lot of uncertainty with what was happening in Greece. Uh, but from my own experience, in terms of the ecosystem, I have to, to, to say that uh, a very critical partner for us was Eurobank. We are not a captive fund, we are not the fund of Eurobank, but Eurobank is absolutely the most significant, the most spectacular private 
or institutional investor that we could possibly uh, ever hope to have. They did a remarkable job of not only themselves understanding what we were trying to do and supporting it, but also helping us raise uh, money from private investors uh, beyond just themselves. That's part of the ecosystem. It's an extremely valuable part of the ecosystem. And they have done other activities now that I'm not going to market for you at this point, but like, incubators and whatnot. It's not part of my domain. But to me, that's an ecosystem when you have all these players that know how to deal with your startup. Uh, thank you, Thanos. And um, Takis, do you also share Thanos' view that we can build global leading firms out of Greece and that this is the best opportunity for your capital and for your, for your, your focus? Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, to be frank, I have a slightly different uh, approach on the subject. I agree with Thanos, however, I believe that uh, uh, although the crisis has affected every single person in this room and uh, our uh, Greek uh, your compatriots, uh, I believe uh, it has bring in an opportunity in order to change things in this country. And uh, ICT is an agent of, of change, effectively, of doing business. So I believe that uh, although there is a golden opportunity for Greek companies to take advantage of this, uh, let's say, mobile app uh, cloud revolution and uh, try to become uh, members of the global uh, market space, I believe there is also a great opportunity for establishing very good Greek ICT companies catering the needs of the local market, which we shouldn't uh, forget is a Western European steel market with a significant above EU average uh, GDP uh, per capita. And uh, there is always this angle that we, we shouldn't forget. I mean, we live in a country that these days most of the old school, let's say, companies are nearly bankrupt. I mean, they are uh, over leveraged. They do not uh, allocate funds for research and development. They don't hire new people. They lay off people, actually. So there are opportunities that smart people can take advantage of and uh, in uh, established markets that, let's say, five or six years ago, there was no opportunity to do anything. Now there are opportunities. And I think People need to take advantage of that in order for us to live in a country with much better companies and uh, uh, workspaces. Now, I'm going to invite everybody uh, to questions from the floor, but I'm just going to ask one last question to each of the panelists quickly, but get your questions ready so that you can contribute them and ask the panelists yourself. But if I could just ask each of the panelists to just, again, uh, future gazing, what are the top three things that we need to focus to, to make sure that the, uh, the momentum and the ecosystem develops in the way that we want to? So without even thinking about too quickly, what are the top three things that have to happen that all of us in this room who clearly care about the subject really want to see happen? Well, the, the first thing for me is for, for the ICT sector, one of the advantages of Greece uh, has to do with the education of its engineers. So number one for me priority is at least the three strong universities we have, the Athens Polytechnique, Crete and Volos potentially to be uh, further invested in and also begin working with companies more, get more of an entrepreneurial approach to their R&D. Uh, the second would be certainly reforming the way banks look at loans. Uh, at the moment, you know, Greek banks require physical collateral. No ICT company has anything other than IP, right? They do not have buildings, they do not have factories. If we continue in the way that Greek banks think, you know, companies like this will never be able to get loans. So that's a second important reform. And uh, I think the third would be certainly create a few compelling success cases where foreign investors, as you say, the next round of financing happens from reputable firms like Axel, Greylock, you know, uh, benchmark, etc., US or, or, or London based, uh, these would be the three main things for me. Fantastic. George? Okay. Well, from my point of view, I think that three years ago there was no ecosystem. Right now we have a very newborn ecosystem, and maybe we shouldn't expect that much things so, so fast, like Thanas is saying. Uh, the important thing is that there's huge progress that has been done within those three years, and uh, the steps that we're doing are also big ones. Uh, for me, the first, the first thing we should do is uh, to help people educate themselves because right now I see a lot of people starting companies that they don't know where they're messing up. I mean, they don't know what are their 
the standards, the law, about uh, what are the instruments that they can raise funds. We need to educate people. That's the very first thing. Uh, the second thing is that we should support people and let them try and probably fail. But we should help them do it fast and learn from that. And the third thing is that we should help people to try again. And then they will make it. I think that the next wave of entrepreneurs in Greece will be the successful one. I'm going to imitate Martin Luther King. I have a dream that a few years from now, all these math and science teachers who give private lessons to our kids so that they can be admitted to the university will not be giving private lessons, but instead will be working in venture-funded ICT companies developing brand new technologies. And all the money that the parents are spending, sending, no, having the private lessons for their kids, will be invested in our venture funds so they can make that much more money and secure the future for themselves and their children. So that's one thing that, that I, I really hope is going to happen. Um, that's my closest to political speech I could ever give. <laughs> uh, but no, I think there's a dynamic here that we need to appreciate. There's a lot of resources that can be applied to the ICT sector, which are now are just you know what happens in Greece. Uh, so that's one thing that I think will change with venture funded companies and so on, the dynamic growth in the ICT sector. For us as uh, VCs, we have to secure the little VC community to make sure that our funds continue to exist and continue to grow and there's a second and a third fund that will follow and hopefully with the help of, you know, the private investors and the institutional investors and the programs like Jeremy, we should be able to be here for a long time. But that's a priority for us. And I totally agree with George that uh, a forum like this and many other uh, activities that take place nowadays uh, will better educate people about what it is to do a startup. Therefore, it would reduce the amount of overhead that we have to go through in order to sort through the business ideas that we see, and to be able to more quickly invest in the right ones. Right, I, th I think the most important uh, thing that uh, at least we need to try to, to do is to replicate the Israeli market. I mean, practically here we only represent approximately 65 uh, million euros, and uh, there are some other uh, companies out there that they do other, they're not investing in ICT, but they have, uh, let's say, several hundred million euros. However, there is a country just uh, you know, one hour flight away that actually they are managing 5 billion euros. And uh, this is something that, of course, most probably will never become Israel. However, we need to try to create an industry that's going to be there uh, and uh, stay there forever. And uh, bear in mind that uh, five years ago, uh, neither George or Maria would be able to secure any financing for their ventures. And uh, again, since we are a country that we are, have been in the West for forever, and this has been very unfortunate. So I think the most important thing in order to promote entrepreneurship and uh, to create jobs and to give hope is that we try to sustain this momentum. And uh, every year the funds under management are more, more venture cap capital companies uh, formed and exist. And uh, there is, let's say, a healthy competition among us in order to create and identify new talent and opportunity. This, in my opinion, will drive growth and will make a sustainable initiative of this kind of, uh, let's say, event. Thank you. Well, from my point of view, uh, George and I, all we have to do is be successful. Uh, so these guys keep on funding new ventures and new uh, dreams. And in order to be successful, we need to focus on our human capital to give incentives and vision, uh, because all you have is your people, actually. And another thing that you have to focus on, and it's a great challenge for um, a small, medium enterprise, which is a startup, actually, is that you have to avoid all the childhood illnesses that come with it. And you have to have a company, you, you, you don't only have to focus on the product and the quality of the product, because then you might uh, create a house of cards, corporation-wise. So you need to focus on the quality of the product, but then again you have to build a robust company. And in order to do this, 
you have to have the knowledge and you have the people, you need to have the people that are helping you. Like Mr. Kaleko said, you need to have this whole ecosystem to teach you how to navigate in this difficult uh, corporation system like a, a company, disciplined company, governance. Um, you have to um, make everything under, um, you have to be disciplined in the way that you have your management. Otherwise, you may run out of money and you may have the greatest product in your hand, but then again, if you don't have the money and you have failed, it's the same thing. So it's great partnering, partnering with an um, uh, with institutional fund like a Jeremy type fund because they provide all of this knowledge uh, that you need as a, business, as a young business person, a new, actually, person in business, in order to succeed. Do we have any questions? Uh, we've got time for maybe two quick questions from the floor. Yes, there we go. Um, fantastic. While we're just waiting for the microphone to get over there, I wanted to just add one point to the last thing. I think, do we have any journalists in the room? We've got a couple. I think there's a special opportunity for the media as well because there's decisions about what you showcase, right? There's, a, there's the editorial decision about whether you choose to talk about the, the new industrialists, the entrepreneurs that are creating the future, or other stories. So whether you want to be uh, shaping the future and, and grabbing hold of the narrative around an entrepreneur-led Greece or another Greece. And I think that's actually one of the things that is very critical in, in creating the ecosystem. But please, question. Yeah, to Mr. Kalekos. Previously, you used my words and my comment on uh, taxation in order to make uh, another comment and uh, jump into another conclusion. Uh, what I want to say is that uh, an entrepreneur's job is to create and multiply value and optimize everything. Later on, you said that you want to strategically take this, those companies and to move them to Delaware, which is a tax haven destination. Could you please uh, state yourself on the issue of the irrational taxation because the EIF is giving the money to you, to me, to everybody else in order to fix the situation here in Greece. So you cannot say that someone is not an entrepreneur just because he not blames but comments on the irrational taxation because I know the choice of British Virgin Island, I know that I have a choice of Delaware, I know that I have a choice of Ireland but it's a different my point is simple. Uh, you can make the comment and you can try to improve the tax laws and whatever. Okay? Uh, don't waste your time there. Your company is going to be successful or will fail for a whole bunch of other reasons that have nothing to do with the fact that you pay 25% more taxes than somebody in Delaware or in the Cayman Islands. Okay. That's my point. Okay. So, don't waste your time. It is what it is, move forward. Okay. That's all. On occasion, if you have the ear of some you know, minister, whisper in his ear, you know, but don't waste your time. Your company will succeed because of all the other things you're going to do. That's all. Okay, we have a question from the live stream, um, and maybe, um, maybe this is one for, for Marco to pick up. Would you think Greek startups would benefit from a low-cost, standards-based, turnkey solution for ICT infrastructure, that is, hardware, business software, internet, telephony? It's a plus, but not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Certainly not. No? Any other questions? Here we got one right there. Just a correction. Uh, Delaware is a very, very popular place for U.S. companies to incorporate themselves. Any Delaware company, like any company in any other part of the U.S., last time I checked, pays 33% corporate tax, which is about eight points higher than Greece. So it has nothing to do with corporate haven. It just has to do with better, less archaic, better corporate organization. Thank you. Any other questions? We've got time for probably one, one more question. Yes, please, right here in the second table. Microphone making its way to you. I'm Salvatore Lepis from Seveno Capital Partners. 
You mentioned private, private money into, into funds, and I think that's a big gap between what we have today and what we should have tomorrow. What are the, your ideas about attracting more private, private funding into the funds? Actually, you mentioned banks, and banks definitely will not be able to fund or, or to, to invest in private equity funds for the foreseeable future in Greece. So what other ideas you have? Look, I mean, we need to be very frank here. I mean, the only driver that will bring uh, private money to venture capital investment is success. I mean, if we manage to deliver returns that are above expectations and are, let's say, beating uh, uh, other managers in other countries, then we will be easily managed to raise additional capital. If we do not, we will not. I mean, venture capital is an investment, uh, let's say, opportunity and the class of asset that attracts uh, investors that are willing to make a return. It's not charity or it's not, let's say, someone that is giving away money. I mean, we are here to make money for our investors and this should be very clear. I mean, we're not here to manage, let's say, grants in uh, favor of the state. And uh, I believe that uh, there is a golden opportunity for us to create value and to create return. And this is the only way to create a successful and uh, uh, an industry that's going to be here forever. One hundred percent agree. I mean, this is it. Show me the money. Uh, if uh, people are investing in us today, a few years from now, they need to see returns. And there we have a challenge for this specific set of Jeremy funds that we will need to raise a second fund before we have had enough time to produce real results from our first funds. Because usually a fund of an early stage fund to mature takes about five to seven years. Within two years, we'll have to be fundraising again. And there is, when we have the year of a minister, we whisper in their ear, listen, you need to have another Jeremy program as part of ESPA 2014-2020, uh, where basically you need to create the right incentives for private investors to come in. And after that, we don't want any more Jeremy's private investors will carry the day because we'll show them the returns that we can produce. Okay, I think our time is up and I would ask you to first of all, watch these companies grow. We've got all of Media Pinata and of course Upstream already a fantastically successful company. Watch these companies grow and support them. And I would ask you to join me in thanking all of the panelists and their contributions this morning, which were really outstanding. Thank you so much.